Ultimate Plugin Guide, Manufacturer Spotlight, Sound Radix. Sound Radix is a, a relatively small company, only has a handful of plugins, but what they do have are really unique ones. Uh, Sound Radix is based out of Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, it's founded in 2010. Uh, there are three basic people that are, are part of it. Nir Averbach, who's uh, originally a musician, producer, um, engineer. Uh, Yair Chuchum and Dan Raviv, I hope I'm not butchering the names, who uh, develop uh, are the developers and work on the algorithms and the code and the design and all of that. Um, essentially what they've done is they've created a handful of tools that are extremely innovative and unique software tools. So um, what's special about Sound Radix is that they have done some things that really very few other people have, or, you know, maybe these things have come out subsequently. And uh, while there's only a handful of things, they're, they're actually quite good. So one thing I'm just going to show you on their website, because it doesn't actually show up as a plugin, is a plugin called uh, 32 Lives. Um, for those of you who are, say, on Cubase, or um, you're on a uh, an operating system that no longer works with 32-bit plugins, but yet you have old sessions that have 32-bit, this is an amazing plugin. It's it's a, it's actually not even really a plugin. What it is, it's a, an application that you download. Uh, you point it to your VST folder and uh, your 32-bit VST folder, and then what it does is it essentially creates uh, more or less like a wrapper or conversion that allows those plugins to appear inside of your DAW, so that when you open up, uh, for example. Let's just say you have Cubase. Cubase 9 no longer supports 32-bit plugins. Uh, so you load in, you, you selectively decide what plugins that you want to restore or keep. Um, it basically creates the wrapper for them. Uh, so when you actually open up your application, it doesn't open up like a separate plugin. Like there are other plugins that do this that uh, allow you to access audio units or VST plugins, but within a particular plugin holder, like you actually have to open up a plugin in order to load that other plugin. It's like a plugin chainer type of thing. Uh, this doesn't work that way. So if you have um, if you have old sessions that have 32-bit um, instruments or or plugins, and you need to recall that mix, and you open it up in your latest version of Cubase, and that doesn't show up, you can actually open it up with this after running this program, which is really cool. I mean, just the, just the thought of that is, is really amazing. Um, and uh, a simple concept, I'm sure it wasn't easy to do, but essentially what it's doing is it's creating a conversion from 32-bit to 64-bit. Now, it only works with audio units and VST, so this is not something you open up in Pro Tools in order to access VST, so just be aware of of that, that's not what's going to happen. So your your DAW has to be AU or VST compatible, and then it will open up those, uh, give you access to those 32-bit plugins. Very very cool. Um, and uh, and so that's that's kind of a starter. So that just gives you an idea of of where uh, you're starting at with stuff like that. One of the ones that I think is is absolutely the must-have plugin is the Surfer EQ. Surfer EQ. This is the second iteration of it is uh, an amazing EQ because it's a pitch tracking EQ. So if you use it on a monophonic instrument, um, bass, vocal, uh, flute, you know, any kind of instrument that's playing singular notes, uh, what it will do is it will track the pitch. And then when you apply an equalization, if you have it surf, then the, the pitch boosts or attenuations will actually map and follow the changing notes. And this is amazing for... Uh, all different kinds of instruments, but particularly things where you want to keep the frequency areas very focused and you're, you want to have like an EQ on that fundamental frequency. It'll just track and follow that fundamental frequency and you can control uh, the attack and recovery times of it and how long it takes to switch from note to note and how tolerant it is uh, for pitch. Uh, so you can make it very tolerant or you can make it very loose. Uh, it will kind of oddly function with other things you know like if you have a drum loop and stuff like that it will kind of follow some things and you can kind of create some cool effects but in addition to the frequency bands kind of moving around um, you also have um, a harmonic resonance filter which is sort of crazy so you can create these really strange resonances and have that kind of swirl and move around 
uh, with things that you're doing, which is just really off the hook. It gives you a lot of options. It's it's seven bands. You have a high pass, low pass filter, five mid bands that also have uh, shelving capability. Um, and then it's also a dynamic EQ. So if you take uh, any given band, uh, you can actually have it, it uh, function so that the EQ will uh, either um, push upward or it will start with the EQ and compress downward. Uh, so, and this is all threshold based, so the signal will have to pass through a threshold, right? So you can see there when it hits the threshold. So it will operate only when there's a signal in. Uh, so you have a threshold over here. And then if you uh, take it to a dip setting, you can have it uh, dip down, right? Uh, when the threshold is, is triggered. Um, and so you can have it actually do upward. So it starts with the EQ and pushes up to, to zero. Or, or the other way around. So you, you can see that there's there's loads of possibilities. So it's a dynamic EQ that tracks pitch and and makes frequency movements based on pitch. And uh, and it's pretty amazing. There's nothing else like it. It is the truly the most unique plugin. And it's actually cool. There, there are certain things that uh, sometimes like it doesn't have infinitely variable cues on, on the gain controls. So if I if I actually uh, uh, do a boost here, let me just take that off there. All right, so that was the other mode. So if I just have it kind of doing a uh, a boost, for example, here I can change the Q bandwidth, uh, and you notice that it changes and adds resonances, right? So I can uh, just kind of drag this over just so you can see. Um, each one has a different, unique shape to it. Right, and so you can kind of pick the the band, and although this doesn't look like a narrow cue, it's actually a pretty narrow cue, and becomes more focused, like a kind of like a like a um, API EQ, like a proportional cue. And so with the different four different filter shapes for each one, it kind of gives each one like a very distinctive characteristic sound, uh, and the EQ on its own just sounds amazing, just on its own, straight up. And then when you start to add in all of the other dynamic controls that you have, it's truly unique. It's beyond what any dynamic EQ can do, um, and uh, and that's an amazing one. So I probably spent more time than I necessarily wanted to with that, but that's a must-have plugin. So feature that in a separate video as well. Um, this is another amazing one, Drum Leveler simple one you apply it to a track and essentially what you have is a high threshold uh, and you could take this and pull uh, signals that pass above this threshold downward uh, if you have you also have a low threshold so signals that pass uh, um, performance levels that dynamics that happen below this will get pulled upward and then you have a percentage control to determine how much you're pulling it towards the center so you could do it a hundred percent which would really kind of you know kind of like almost quantize it level wise into place or you could have it like at 50 percent uh, where you know it goes that way or you could have it go in the opposite direction so that it expands the dynamic so you can work in two directions uh, in that way um, and what this does is you set a target level right you set a target level and uh, you set your thresholds and it kind of pulls signals together now it also has a gate it has all kinds of crazy things uh, in in here, uh, minimum re-trigger, so you don't get false triggers and stuff like that. Um, but fundamentally, using this on individual instruments, if you have a track where you kind of like a, like a dense production where the drums need to be really consistent and it's a live drum performance and maybe the dynamics are, are um, not as um, solid and focused as what you'd like, this is like an incredible plugin for that. And it also has sidechain filtering, extremely well thought out. Um, uh, simple to use plugin. If you have it on stereo, you could work in dual mono stereo or mid side mode, um, and uh, and also have uh, separate EQs for left and right channel or mid and side channel, and all of that sort of stuff. So you could see all of that kind of switch and change around uh, for the settings and stuff like that. Kind of cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, um, another one that's that's pretty. Um, outstanding. This is a simple one, and, and I'll go on to the two other complex ones, but this is a really, really cool, simple plugin. It's just Mutomatic. <laughs> and uh, what happens is, is that uh, when, if you select, there are three selections here. One doesn't show up in Pro Tools, uh, and it does in, in most other applications that I've tried. What happens is if I hit play, 
the signal will mute. So if I have a talkback mic, for example, as soon as I hit play on the transport, it will mute the talkback mic. So maybe my microphone feeding out to the person in the room. Um, it's in a separate room that I'm recording. Perfect. If I want to do the opposite, I can have it mute so that um, when I'm in stop, it mutes, and then when it goes into play, it unmutes. So you can you can open up tracks and kind of do the opposite, right? So there's there's some things uh, that uh, maybe you have multiple mics in a room, and you could have them mute, you know, when they're not playing. And there's another one which does the same, which will mute when you go into record. And sometimes that's cool if you're recording to an audio track, but you want to kill the feed that goes to the headphones uh, through the DAW, so they're only getting... Um, they're getting the direct feed from your interface uh, so that it's latency free uh, so you can set the mix up with your software there for the headphones and then you wouldn't get the delayed feed from the recorded signal so it wouldn't mute when you record simple really again like just like a tool when, with those three options you can pretty much take and and solve just a lot of simple basic problems uh, just working particularly on the recording side uh, that's kind of cool um, there's another plugin here called Auto Align. Uh, with Auto Align, you can pair up some plugins. Usually, you have a send channel and a receive channel. Um, so the send channel would be the primary. This is perfect for, like, say, uh, where you have multiple mics on a guitar, for example. So what you have is you have um, one. You know, let's just say here I got uh, two two mics here. Let me bypass these guys. <laughs> So what happens is, is you get phase correction of, of one to another. So uh, there, there are more differences than just, you know, two mics. When you set mics at a distance from each other, um, you can phase align them and correct them, you know, uh, to some degree by lining up the waveforms, but that doesn't necessarily correct all the phase differential issues. And this does this uh, in, in a much more dynamic way. So where you'll see... Uh, the phase correction is on a frequency spectrum from low end to high end to the right. And then so when you see those colors there, you could see, you know, where the correction is being applied. And if you want to make one more distant, you can actually uh, go ahead and, and find a timing uh, of distance. This is showing in samples, but I can also show it in, in uh, milliseconds. Um, where you can find a distance of the microphone, of the uh, distant microphone, how long or far away it would be, so that you you know would get a phase coherent delay, and uh, so you can kind of work from from that perspective as well, uh, and so that's that's kind of interesting, you know, another way of kind of balancing this out, and then you can kind of drag through this. Right now, this is uh, this is displaying in samples but I could switch it to milliseconds. So there you can see what the distance is in milliseconds. Uh, and I think there's, uh, no, that's, yes, there's another unit there in inches. <laughs> if you work there, it should be in uh, meters or something, right? Centimeters, there's centimeters, and then there's inches, right? Okay, so it, it kind of covers the world in that regard. Um, so anyway, this gives you the ability to have that because sometimes you set a distant mic on something to get the timing right. In some cases, you have two close mics and you just want to phase align them so that they're phase coherent, and this is perfect for that. So really cool, very simple tool. Uh, it even has a delay um, a detection, or I'm sorry, a phase a detection. So if you hit the detect, it will flash. You hit play, you feed the signal in, and then what it'll do is it'll tell you if it's out of phase. And so you have like a, a reverse phase in inversion. Um, you can uh, work uh, with delay correction or delay and uh, polarity correction, right? So then this will start to um, correct that. And so, uh, because I have the delay on this, right? So I would need to uh, eliminate the delay time. But you get the you get the basic idea there. So uh, I can uh, work with that, and you could just kind of see, you know, like get something balanced that that gives you the depth and the sound and character that you want. Uh, there's also another one here, uh, which is uh, equally cool, and that's called the Pi. 
um, Pi stands for um, uh, phase interactions mixer. And uh, essentially what you have here with the, with the Pi is something that you put on the last plug-in slot of every audio channel on your track so you don't put this on the effects returns. Um, and, uh, oops, I think I just called up the auto align. Not sure how I did that. Did it backwards. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so what this does is you, you apply this to the audio tracks in your mix. Uh, it has some basic controls. You have uh, 64 groups, so you can group individual tracks together. This is also a phase alignment tool, uh, but it works more in particular frequency areas. So when, when you set up a mix, you can set up drums, for example, into a group. And then within that group, you can basically do phase coherent, you know, corrections. Um, or you could just put together, say, for example, a kick drum and a bass. And with those two grouped together, what will happen is uh, they will um, phase align. So if for whatever reason, um, in any particular hit, the kick drum doesn't phase align well with the bass and, and the note starts to sound less powerful or less driving, as it as it you know the kick drum pushes through, this will help to make those corrections and balance them. So it's like real time phase correction. Uh, you can do it on a limited scale like that within a pair of tracks or a grouping of tracks, or you could do it on a whole mix. So if you apply this to all the audio tracks in your mix, you can tie everything together. You can uh, set uh, a weighting so that channels that have a heavier weighting uh, are more phase priorities like vocal, kick drum, you know, uh, snare drum, maybe some tracks that you want to stand out a little bit more. Uh, and it will make more of the phase corrections on less important instruments so there's less interference patterns that go on. And it's one of those things that you just, uh, outside of that description, and, and there are uh, a plethora of options that kind of go along with this. You can collect, correct just low frequencies, you can correct uh, full frequency, um, and, and there's also a variety of other options that works within the group, um, uh, works, you know, uh, with both, you know, uh, the group and the whole mix. Um, or, you know, you can just phase lock just within the, you know, group or, you know, anyway, I think the internals with the whole mix. Um, but you have lots of options where you can turn one off and make it not part of the system. Uh, very cool, right? So there's, there's loads of options uh, in it, uh, it even has a, a, a frequency meter, multiband frequency meter. So, so it'll show you phase coherency um, relative to frequency, and uh, in in the process of making the corrections and all of that. So uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Again, another one like that's it, very unique and something that you have to um, kind of check out for yourself. You know, but the Pi phase interactions uh, mixer, which is kind of cool. So, loads of stuff. Only a handful of plugins, but uh, loads of possibilities and some things that are uh, very, very unique that you just don't see. Uh, they're not going the route of working with um, um, just doing, you know, like vintage emulations or or making, you know, EQs and competing in a marketplace that has tons of EQs. They try to create. Uh, unique tools that are actually really powerful and extremely useful in the mix. And uh, that's why uh, um, it's a feature for the Ultimate Plugin Guide, a manufacturer spotlight, sound writings.